Beatles. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash Gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of The Blue Beetle is the second part of a story entitled Crime Incorporated. In the first part of this story, crime overlords of various cities have gathered in York City to organize crime on a nationwide basis. Patrolman Dan Garrett, through a clever disguise, has convinced Frankie Capetto, the ringleader of the gang, that he would be an asset to the crime ring. Hired by Capetto, he has been given a Blue Beetle costume and ordered to report to a man named Slick. Meanwhile, underworld characters masquerading in Blue Beetle costumes have committed several crimes throughout the city. The First National Bank has been robbed. Commissioner Donnelly's daughter has been kidnapped. And the mayor's office has been bombed. As our story opens, a meeting of Crime Incorporated is in session. Well, boys, the first part of our plan is underway. The city officials are scared. Our next move is to terrorize the citizens themselves. How? The guy I hired last night, Strangler Van Norden, he calls himself, says he's a wrestler. He's husky enough to be one. Yeah, but he ain't fooling me. He's got brains. What are you going to use him for? Hold ups. Can he shoot? I don't know, and I don't care. He won't use a gun. But how do you expect... He'll to... just come up in back of a guy in the dark, give him the old hugger-mugger with his arm around his neck, rob him and let him drop. That's swell. No noise or nothing. That's right. Once he gets started, the citizens will demand a crime cleanup. Well, what about the real blue beetle? Well, I figure he'll fall into our net as soon as he hears about all these fake blue beetles. Once we get him out of the way, we're all set. We'll organize this town, then move on to other big cities. Now, each of you specialists... Well, hedge your own racket, but the take will be pooled. Every so often, the syndicate will declare a dividend. That's a swell idea. Great. I hope it works. Yeah? All the Blue Beetles are here. What about Strangler Van Norden? He's in the outer office. Hold the others and send in Van Norden. Okay. Oh, well, listen, Frankie. Yeah? No one by the name of Van Norden ever worked for B.J. You sure? Positive. Okay, send in this Strangler and we'll unmask him. What's the lowdown? This wrestler's a fake. You mean he's a dick? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. Here's the strangling. Oh, come in, Van Norden. You met some of these gentlemen before? Yes, I have. Say, you look swell in your blue beetle costume. Thanks. It's a very good fit, too. Uh, by the way, uh, just what sort of work did you do for the late B.J.? Well, I... Uh, well, I said, never mind. I won't pry into your past. I'll let somebody else do that. Yeah, Frankie? Come in and bring the other blue beetles with you. Okay. Mr. Strangler Van Norden, I want you to meet B.J.'s former chief of staff, Slick Thomas. He says you never worked for B.J. Oh, come in, boys. Hey, Slick. Yeah, Frankie? Strip the mask from the Strangler's face. Okay. Grab them, boys. No, you don't. There's one blue beetle left. Two blue beetles left. And now for... I got him with the chair. How will I plug him? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not here. Slick. Yeah, Frankie? Unmask him. Sure. There. <laughs> well, loud be... Hey, you know him? Sure. Who is he? The copper, Dan Garrett. Dan Garrett. A copper. Hey, what do you say, Capetto? Let me plug him. Now, put up your guns. We don't want any shooting around here. What will I do with him, Frankie? Examine his costume. Oh, looks like one of ours. How about the midget antenna and his helmet? Just a minute. It's a fake. It ain't connected with anything. Search him. You find anything? Nothing. No magic ray or flashlight or master keys? Nothing, Frankie. Then he isn't a real blue beetle. Just a dumb copper. No, not so dumb. What do I do with him? Throw some water on him. We'll take him out to Hangman's Island where we've got the girl. Hey, it's a cop. Hey, Frankie, I should have stayed on guard. Hey, how do we get out of here? We'll blast our way out. Hey, quick. This way, everybody. Through this panel. There's a secret stairway to the roof. Come on. Okay. Here we go. But first, here's one for the copper on the floor there. Yeah. His next costume will be a white robe and a harp. <laughs> There you are, 
Danny. All bandaged up. Thanks, Doc. A little more to the right, and that thug's bullet would have put an end to the career of patrolman Dan Garrett. And the Blue Beetle. Uh, why didn't you wear the real Blue Beetle costume and mask and take along the magic ray and other things? Well, I was out after information. I figured there was no sense in the Blue Beetle's nipping and until I knew more about the plans of Crime Incorporated. And what did you find out? Well, from what I heard as I was regaining consciousness after being hit on the head with a chair... Mary Donnelly's being held captive out at Hangman's Island. Uh, when are you going out there? Right away. But your wound... Oh, a little thing like that won't stop the real Blue Beetle. It's only a flesh wound. But you're going as the real Blue Beetle this time, I hope. You bet. And I'd like to take along that electric ray pistol if it's ready. It's all ready, Danny. Ah, fine, Doc. Now, as soon as I get into my Blue Beetle costume, I'm off to Hangman's Island. Tonight, the Blue Beetle will sting as well as nip. <laughs> So, Miss Donnelly, you refuse to sign this ransom note to your father? I certainly do. And I'm afraid he'll never see you again. You can't frighten me. You'd never dare harm me. My father You've would... been reading the wrong kind of literature, Miss Donnelly. What do you mean? You've been reading old-fashioned romances, where the brave and the true survive, and the wicked perish. My father will have every policeman on the force out searching for me. But you'll never be found alive. You let me out of here. Let me out of here or I'll scratch your eyes easy, out. There, I... Easy, easy, or I'll have you tied up again. <clears throat> You'll be sorry for this. Now, why don't you sign this note, huh? Your father can raise $50,000, and as soon as we have the money, you'll be free. I'll never sign it. Never. Never. And I'm afraid you'll die of starvation in this cell. Unless your father's men get too close on our heels. In which case, I'll set fire to the powder magazine in the room next to yours and blow this whole place to kingdom come. Hey, what's that noise? The Blue Beetle. And he's going to nip. Help, Blue Beetle, help. Help, I'm locked in the cell here. Beat it, beat it, Blue Beetle. Don't try to hijack me. I'll wipe you out and throw your body in the river. Not this, Blue Beetle. Sick, Joe, Rod, fuck it. All them all. And call your fake blue beetles. I'll take them all on. What's the Come on, Whitey. What's hey, the matter? Well, one of the blue beetles gone haywire. He's holding up Capetto. I'm more down. Yeah. Stand back, all of you, or I'll shoot some of you blue beetles there. You're wearing chain armor. Sure. Rush him. Okay, right. Come on. We'll get him, Will. Oh, oh, what kind of a gun is that? <laughs> I must have been shooting blanks at him. Now I'll shoot Rocky, and it won't be blank. Oh! Now, stand back, all of you. Pedro, give me the key to Miss Donnelly's cell. Try and get it. Here, here, take the key. Take the key. Take all of them. Now, all of you, get over against the wall. Are you all right, Miss Donnelly? Just about. Thank heavens you came when you did. That fiend there was going to blow me up. Blow you up? Yes. You see, the powder magazine is in that room next to this cell here. Hmm. That's an idea. Here. Take the keys and see if one of them will open that door. All right. It's unlocked. Slip the bolt. Now, open the door. Hey, what are you going to do? Blow up this hideout. No, 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 quiet, no, no. quiet, quiet. Or I'll blast you again with my gun. Here. I'll crack open this keg of gunpowder. There we are. Now, Miss Donnelly, go up those stairs there as fast as you can. But what about you, Blue Beetle? I'll follow you, leaving a trail of gunpowder as I go. If any of these crooks move, I'll set fire to the trail and blow them all off the map. Here we go. Hey, Frankie, Frankie, the money. It's upstairs. Yeah. One more shot can't do no harm. <laughs> Hey, look out! The Blue Beetle set fire to the gunpowder trail. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, Danny, the Blue Beetle certainly wiped out one rat nest. Yes, and a lot of fake Blue Beetles with it. I meant to give them an even chance with the law when we got outside. But when I gave Rocky another burn with a ray gun, it ignited the powder trail. You and Miss Donnelly were lucky to escape with your lives. Yes. 
soon as I got her back to the mainland, I, I sent her home in a taxi. Well, you'd better turn in. Yes, I guess I will, Doc. <laughs> After this adventure, I'll be seeing blue beetles in my sleep. <laughs> So the real Blue Beetle cleaned up a lot of fake Blue Beetles and smashed the nationwide crime ring before it had a chance to incorporate. The moral of this story is that no matter what the odds, good will triumph over evil. Might is not right, but right is might. Further adventures of the Blue Beetle will be presented in the next episode of the Blue Beetle. Copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to... The Blue Beetle.